Hey there and welcome to Let's Create a Game. In this episode it's all about destroying our enemies. And for that we are dealing with explosions and fire, building our own particle engine. So let's continue creating a game. Last time we've created some enemies and we've also enabled the player to shoot those enemies. But of course this was very boring because there was just no impact that we shot the enemy, just disappeared without nothing. And we want to change that now by adding some feedback when a bullet hits the enemy. This is actually pretty simple. We use a little trick. We just uh, blend over a darker color when a bullet hits the enemy. So this is just one frame, but it's enough to get some kind of a feedback. So we create a variable hit color. color and we use this in the draw method instead of the color white and now in the damage method we set this color to color.black and we set it to the default while we're in the update method so we implement this update method actually here instead of marking it abstract and we set the hit color to color white i think this should work Okay, and now we have to call the base, of course. Alright. Let's give it a try. Cool. Okay, now we, we, we have to increase maybe the, the hit points of the enemies to, to see it better. Right now it's set to, to 10. And of course we're dealing, how much damage do we deal? We deal um, 5 damage, so let's set the hit points to 54 now. Should take 10 bullets now to kill an enemy. Okay, now you see a little impact when the bullet hits the enemy. Alright, now of course for more satisfaction we want to blow up our enemies with some nice explosions so the next thing we do is coding our particle engine but before i want to tell you what it actually is a particle engine is basically a um, technique which is used commonly in games or computer graphics generally to create some kind of chaotic natural phenomena like for instance smoke, fire, explosions, or maybe blood splatter. And it works like that. You have the emitter, which is the source. And from that source, a lot of different individual particles are being spawned. Every particle has its own texture and is moved or rotated depending on the effect you want to create. For instance, if you want an explosion effect, you want the particles to be spawned in a center point of impact and then spread randomly across all different directions. A very important aspect is always the randomness because you want to create some kind of natural feeling and natural look instead of the numeric and calculated approach. So first thing is creating a namespace for the particle engine. Get some more structure in our code. Um, let's call it particle engine. And now the two things, the two components will be the emitter and the actual particle. Let's start with the particle class because it's actually pretty simple. It's just a collection of different attributes, particle, and these attributes will be And then we need a time to leave, which is actually the time the particle exists. So the time when it should leave from the screen, it should disappear. Uh, and the last thing, which will be a private variable, is, a, um, is the start time. Because we want later uh, to calculate some kind of um, fading some interpolation and for that we need uh, the start time and the time to leave. 
All right, now we've just set our attributes. Note we've set the start time to the time to leave at the beginning. And now we create a update method. Each time this is called, so each step um, that the time to leave is reduced. And then the, we add the velocity vector to the position. And um, we add the angular velocity to the angle. All right, then we need a draw method. So I've basically just added a little color fading effect. Um, I've just multiplied the color by the percentage of time that's passed to kind of fade away the effect in transparency. Now, actually we want um, to add our game time here because we don't want to depend on the frames our game runs. So we want to change the, the times to float values. All right, now that's our little particle class. Pretty simple. Now let's create our emitter class, so our base particle engine. Let's create a new class and call it particle engine. This class will be abstract because for each different effect we create, uh, we'll derive from that class. First, we need a random object because we will need a lot of random generation in this class. Um, then we need uh, the location of the emitter. So the, the location where our particles will be spawned. And of course, very important, our list of particles. Actually, this doesn't need to be public with our just created particle class. Then we need a to save the texture that our particles should have. All right, um, now there's actually two types of particle engines we will create. Um, the first one will be the engine which just creates a lot of particles at one time and one position and one position, like for instance, at an explosion effect. And the other way uh, would be, for instance, a fire where a bunch of particles is being spawned at, a, at some kind of interval. So each round, a bunch of new particles is being spawned and constantly uh, spawns those particles. At first, we create uh, the more, the easier way, which is the explosion type of engine. So let's create a simple constructor. Now we create um, an update and a draw method, which is basically just iterating over the particles and updating or drawing them. If the particle's time is over, um, we just remove the particle from our list. Now we only need one more method and that's the generation method for to create a bunch of particles at a certain spot. Let's just call this generate particles. To our list and here we create an abstract method generate particle which is generating the actual uh, single particle, the abstract particle, of course, as a return. So for each different effect, we will just um, create a new class and override this single method, which implements the actual generation of a single particle. Before we create our individual classes now, um, I want to head back to Inkscape and create some graphics. We need two effects for now. The first will be the explosions of our enemies. And the second one will be a simple fire trail, which comes out uh, from our player's chat. Let's start with the explosion.
course this looks a little bit odd right now but you will see with a little trick we'll use this will look like an explosion and the fire trail later okay now i've just exported the graphics and added them to our pro content project now let's continue with the creation of our specific particle engine uh, first the explosion particle engine this class derived from our particle engine and implements the constructor and our abstract class generate particle this is actually the only method we have to implement and what this method does is just create um, a particle instance with some random attributes um, let's first start with the position this is just basically the emitter location then the velocity a two-dimensional vector with two random directions And now uh, return our new particle with these attributes. Now the only thing that's left is we need to actually um, add our particle engine instance and we do this in our level class um, because we, we will have uh, multiple different particle engines later. We'll just create a, a list or rather I like a dictionary for that actually with a string as a key so we can associate um, our different particle engines with different names. And now we want to add our explosion particle engine to, to this dictionary. Um, let's iterate over all the particle engines and update and draw them. Okay, now the only thing that's left is to actually create uh, an explosion effect when a bullet hits an no, when an enemy gets destroyed, of course. And this happens right here. We have set our comment already. Uh, just fetch the particle engine, the explosion particle engine, and call generate particles. A particle count, let's just use uh, 30 maybe. And the position, this should be the sprite's position. Maybe let's just call sprite rect dot center two vector two. Okay, I think this should be it for now. Let's just hit the run button and see what happens. We get a null reference exception because of course that's a very common error for me. Obviously. I haven't initialized the list hope that's the only stupid mistake I've made. Okay, it runs. And another exception. Another null reference exception. <laughs> okay, the, the random object wasn't created as well. Um, this happens right here. Random equals new random. Another one of these mistakes. Another try. And... <laughs> Whoa, 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 okay. Uh, now the velocity is a little bit too high. Okay, so let's set the velocity to a lower value. And 
One more thing that's very important, we forgot um, additive blending. In the sprite batch dot begin, you have uh, the attribute blend state. Um, and here you have one value that's additive. Additive blending basically means that the textures are that are being draw drawn upon are being multiplied. So the colors are multiplied, uh, which creates a nice fiery glowing effect with explosions and we need that but we don't want to do this for all textures but only for our particles so we need uh, to separate these two draw calls and for that we need a different render target we need to use t two render targets render targets are basically just a buffer on which you can draw a whole bunch of things separately from each other so we create two r different render targets one for our basic drawing stuff and the other one for our particles. So I've actually done two things at once now. I have separated the drawing calls um, to first draw to the two different rec uh, render targets. Here we need uh, the method which draws the particles yet. And then I've introduced a new variable resolution which basically uh, contains the actual resolution of the screen of the player by drawing the rec render targets now with this resolution, we can actually create a uh, resolution independence very easily. Now let's... Oh, here we need the big Y. Now we need t uh, to introduce a new function, draw particles in our level class. And now we call this one here. Okay, perfect. Now if everything worked right, we should now get some nice results. Let's try. Nice! You see this looks way better than before because of mostly because of the additive blending which is very important for this explosions effect. Okay, now we have our explosions. Now let's add our fire trail for the player's chat. And for that we want to um, expand our particle engine class um, to create continuously spawning particles. Okay, now I've added a few variables and functions. Uh, the function start uh, is used to actually start the particle engine, spawning continuous particles at a given interval. And the variable particles per round is basically just how much particles each round are spawned. Let's create one more class here, uh, the specialized fire trail particle engine. This will look pretty much like the explosion particle engine, but with a slightly different generate particle method. Now here we want constant x direction, um, negative of course, and a slightly fluctuating random y direction. Okay, now let's add the fire trail particle engine to our level class, to our dictionary of particle engines. 
call the start method of the particle engine in the player's initialization uh, init method because I think we need to call this at a different time than the constructor. <coughs> and of course we need to update the position, the emitter location of the particle engine as well to keep up with the player's position. Let's see if it works. No, it does not. Let's take a look. We've set the location. Then... Oh! Oh! I forgot to increase the spawn timer. Alright, let's give it another try. No, still doesn't work. Oh well, I didn't call the init method of the player, of course. Initialized yet. But now... Yeah, now we have... <laughs> Wow, okay, we have a fire trail. It's a bit, a little bit too bright maybe and too big. Let's decrease the size of the particles. Cool, I think this doesn't look bad. Does yeah, I'm satisfied for now. Okay, that's it for today. Time for a little review. First we've added some feedback when we shoot our enemies and then we've coded our whole bunch of particle engines. First of all the explosions and then the fire trail. You've seen what you can do with uh, additive blending which is really nice stuff when you're dealing with a uh, kind of fire effect. And I hope to see you next time when we create some user interface and some more enemies. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a nice day. Bye.